Angela Academy is proud to present its first year video for the 1989-1990 school year. Sister Naomi, a teacher for 26 years at VA, will give a brief history of Villa Angela Academy. The Villa celebrates 112 years of excellence in education. So now it is with nostalgia that we look back on those years and the 140 years that have run their course since that August day in 1850 when the Ursula nuns of Boulogne sur Mer, France, first set foot and eyes on Cleveland, Ohio, the new field of their labors. They brought with them from France a religious and cultural heritage, begotten of centuries of conformity to the best Christian tradition. To the Ursula nuns, your teachers in this school will follow them in educating young girls in the Diocese of Cleveland. They have passed on those traditions by word of mouth and by force of their example. Today they staff one college, three high schools, 24 grade or elementary schools, and are engaged in the education of the deaf and the handicapped. They have served and are still serving as nurses, dietitians, pastoral ministers, health care assistants, missionaries, and in various other fields and ministries where they are needed. They were the pioneer laborers in the establishment of our school system here in the Diocese of Cleveland. Since education on all levels has been their greatest work, and much of the excellence of our diocesan Catholic school system is due to their efforts, it is fitting that you be afforded a brief glimpse into the past history of one of their enterprising educational ventures known as the Villa so that you can know and better appreciate our Villa Angela heritage. In September 1878, the Ursuline Boarding School, now known as Villa Angela, was removed from Cleveland, where it had been established in 1850 by the Ursuline nuns at number 50 on Euclid Avenue, to its present location at the mouth of Euclid Creek in rural Nottingham, Ohio. For some time prior to 1878, the gradual advance of trade had taken from the locality surrounding the academy at number 50 on Euclid Avenue. That quiet and seclusion, which the community had enjoyed for many years, following the purchase of the property in 1850. Also, the building grew inadequate to accommodate the growing and increasing number of pupils who applied for admission. So Bishop Gilmore, observing this condition, urged the removal of the school to the suburbs of the city. He directed the sisters to the site of the present Villa Angela Saint. There is a place on Lake Erie at the mouth of Euclid Creek, which I wish to purchase for our seminary, but the owner, Mr. Gilbert, would not sell it. I hear that he is now willing to do so. Accordingly, on May 24, 1874, the superior of the convent school at the time, Mother Mary of the Annunciation, visited the Gilbert estate, and seeing the desirability of securing that piece of property pointed out by the bishop, entered into negotiations to purchase it. But before doing so, the nuns quietly and prayerfully buried medals of Our Lady of Prompt Succor, St. Joseph, St. Angela, St. Ursula and St. Anthony in the sand on the lake shore and in the cliff overlooking the lake. The nuns prayed fervently that God would procure the property for them. Mr. Gilbert demanded $1,500 an acre, an exorbitant price, and the nuns could not induce Mr. Gilbert to sell the property for less. So on June 12, 1874, the Villa Angela property comprising 38 acres was bought, and on June 19, 1874, the deed was placed on record. On the 8th of September, 1878, the boarding school was opened at the villa, and the Right Reverend Monsignor Buff was appointed resident chaplain, a post he held for 34 years. When the Villa Angelo property was purchased, it was with the exception of the banks along Euclid Creek running through it, and a part of what was known as Maple Avenue, a treeless piece of ground. 
By the end of 1879, however, the walks were laid out and fruit trees, shade, and ornamental trees were planted under the direction of Mr. F. B. Van Veld, the superintendent of work. The trees and shrubs were largely the gift of the late Mr. William J. Gordon, whose daughter had attended the academy on Euclid Avenue. In 1895, a temporary chapel was enlarged and renovated, and the auditorium was erected. Heretofore, mass had been offered in the school library from July 16, 1878, until the completion of the school chapel in 1895. The first graduation of the villa was in June 1879, and these five young ladies, Mary Delhoffer, Jesse Kimball, Nellie Leonard, Catherine Mackin, and Flora Schwab received diplomas. Over the years, the school grew and prospered, and in 1941, the boarding school was discontinued, and the villa became a day school for girls when the Ursula Mother House was relocated from Old Wilson Avenue, East 55th Street, to the Lakeshore property. Grounded conditions and temporary quarters became the rule for the school. Portable buildings to house the biology lab and the school cafeteria were purchased as surplus property from the government. These portables were actually World War II barracks. By the late 1960s, the increasing enrollment, the inadequacy of the buildings, and the expansion of the high school program in the Diocese of Cleveland demanded that a new school be built. So in September 1972, Villa Angelo Academy, now a diocesan high school administered by the Erston sisters, was built to carry on the enterprising ventures of this religious community. Prior to 1886, the Diocese of Cleveland, though amply provided with institutions devoted to the care and the education of girls, had no boarding school for little boys within its extensive limits. Many persons felt this necessity and often expressed the wish that such provision be made. The Right Reverend Bishop Gilmore especially appreciated this one and had it in view when in 1886 he ur urged the Ursulines to buy the 27 acres adjoining the first purchase of the 38 acres of the Villa Angela property. This brought the total acres owned to 65. The bishops often said, it is an ideal place for little boys, and they will receive under the care of the sisters just the training they need during those early years of their growing up. This great bishop was very partial to the small boy, and often deplored the injudicious difference sometimes made between him and his pampered sister. So at his earnest request, the Ursulines undertook the charge of a preparatory school for young boys, ranging in years from minimums to 12 years. A two-story frame building, Mr. Gilbert's old home, which stood upon the newly acquired 27 front acres, where the new Villangelo now stands, was renovated and converted into the boys' school. This received the title of St. Joseph Seminary School for Boys when it officially opened on September the 8th, 1886. The school grew and prospered, and before it was four years old, the need for a larger building became quite apparent. So with the advice and the consent of Bishop Gilmore, plans were drawn up by architect Swineforth and submitted to the bishop for his approval in January 1891. Work on the new building began immediately and was completed on March 19, 1892, the Feast of St. Joseph, the patron of the school. The girls' school on the back 38 acres of the property was known as St. Mary's. It accommodated both boarders and day scholars. And St. Joseph's School on the front 27 acres became the boys' school for both boarders and day scholars. St. Joseph's continued in operation for the next 54 years until it was destroyed by fire on February 4, 1946. The following timeline 
serves as a capsulated summary of our financial approach. Early in 1986-87, demographic changes in this northeast area of the city became apparent. A task force made up of members of Villa Angelo Academy and St. Joseph's High School, a neighboring diocesan high school for boys, was formed to study these changes and the declining enrollment in both schools and to make recommendations for the continuance of Catholic education in this area. The task force submitted their findings and recommendations to the Diocese of Cleveland in June of 1988. In September of that year, the diocese announced the merger of the two schools, which is to become effective on July the 1st, 
says to his disciples, do not worry about your livelihood, what you are to eat or drink or use for clothing. Is not life more than food? Is not the body more valuable than clothes? I always appreciate celebrating, praying with you, because your spirit is something unique. And I enjoy the, the quality of your music, and the quality of your prayer. So I'm very glad to be with you today. First of all, you have to hug what you've got. And then you have to hug what you're going to be. And I think those are words of wisdom for us today as we begin the school year. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And blesses our memories of the past and beckons us to the future. <laughs> Lord God, for all that has been, we say thank you. We pray in the name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God bless us all. Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit.
I will be continuously praying for the success of the new bench. One of the laws that was mentioned within the readings. And if you think you're confused by a question, so they try two fours plus one four, which is the one that we call, that we start with the genus home. All right? There's going to be this group of people, and that's really what's going to be happening here. hit leader admitted to concealing racetrack winnings from the IRS and agreed to pay stiff fines and penalties. On September 22nd, Hurricane Hugo slammed into the coast of the Carolinas with winds near 100 miles per hour, causing massive destruction and loss of life. Dozens died and damage was in the billions when on October 17th a massive earthquake struck the San Francisco Bay Area. Despite the devastation, experts warned this was not the major quake many feared. President Bush called for a constitutional amendment making
making the burning or desecration of the flag a criminal offense. The Supreme Court had earlier held the act protected by the First Amendment right of free speech. Thousands celebrated when on November 9th, the Berlin Wall dividing Germany was toppled, allowing free passage between East and West and opening the door to a reunited German nation. The Rolling Stones celebrate over 25 years on the charts with a massive tour of the U.S. The band would play 60 shows in 32 cities in what was billed as the Steel Wheels Tour. On December 20th, in an effort to oust strongman dictator Manuel Noriega to face drug charges in the U.S. and to protect some 35,000 American citizens abroad, American troops invade the country of Panama. The San Francisco 49ers, behind the performance of quarterback Joe Montana, cement their reputation as the team of the decade by defeating the Denver Broncos in Super Bowl 24. As more than 100 million people worldwide took part in Earth Day, President Bush called for the banning of ships and dangerous cargo from the environmentally sensitive reefs off the Florida Keys. Ending years of debate, Soviet Premier Gorbachev and President Bush meet in Washington to sign the START Agreement to reduce nuclear arms.
May we always be alive with your spirit. Lord, you have blessed us with the gift of your everlasting love. Lord, you have blessed us with the love and support of family, teachers, and friends. Lord, you have blessed us with the riches of the Catholic education. Graduation is the beginning of the next part of our lives. So much thanks to those people who helped us reach this moment in time. What you send out to others in life is exactly what you're going to get back. And I hope that God continues to bless all of you in your life. Jennifer Ann Santiago. Tia Renee.